What are the deeds that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned? Equal hajj. First and foremost, the sincerity of intention. And you know, sometimes, especially for those that make the intention of hajj, it doesn't really hit them that, you know, inshallah, you had the niyyah, so bidnillahi ta'ala, because you had the intention, the sincere intention, it counts. But I didn't feel it, right? I didn't get to go to Medina and go to Mecca. I didn't feel the struggle of hajj. And so it's hard for me to conceive that perhaps I actually would have the reward of hajj. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant it to all of us who made the intention for hajj or umrah, Allahumma ameen. And then you look at this particular hadith where the Prophet ﷺ chose to talk about the people who wanted to go to Tabuk. Now remember, Tabuk was a difficult journey. It was in the heat of the summer and it was a journey that the hypocrites did not want to go on because it just required so much and they made all sorts of excuses. And the Prophet ﷺ is speaking to those who actually went to Tabuk and they actually encountered all of its hardships. And he says, there are people that are not with you, that they were held back by some sort of sickness or al-udr, they had some sort of excuse, but they have the same reward as you. There are people that have the same reward, even though they did not struggle the way that you struggled. So the sincerity of intention is important. And it's something that we have to always remind ourselves of, that inna man a'malu bin niyat, that actions are but by intentions. So you have to actually work on your intention and make sure that as you intend to do something that you sincerely intend it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then the reward is assured from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so you have one of the most hopeful hadiths, not just about attaining the reward of hajj, but hajj with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine if you lived in Medina, think about the few people that did not get to go on hajj with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it's being referred to as hajj al wada' the farewell hajj. There's a chance that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam won't go out again. And so people are really remorseful and regretful that did not go with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there's this particular woman, Umm Sinan al-Ansariya radiallahu ta'ala anha, who was so sad because she wanted to go on Hajj with the Prophet Sallallahu but she was unable to. So she goes to the Prophet Sallallahu and she complains to the Prophet Sallallahu about her situation that Ya Rasulullah, I missed Hajj with you. So this is after the Hajj. And the Prophet Sallallahu says, well, what stopped you from doing Hajj with us, O Umm Sinan? And she said, my husband only has two camels. He used one for himself to go out with Hajj for you. And the other camel is for irrigating our land. So I had no way to actually go out or Hajj with you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu could have given her a specific answer to her situation. He could have said to her, for example, that, you know, you had the sincere intention. So inshallah, it counts. And that would have been true to everything that the Prophet Sallallahu had already said about so many other things. But instead, a gift to the entire Ummah. The Prophet Sallallahu says to her, if you do Umrah in Ramadan, it is equal to doing Hajj with me. When you see the Haram in normal circumstances, full in the time of Ramadan, and the people flocking from all over the world know that that is the reward of Hajj with the Prophet ﷺ. Now you have all of these various deeds. These are things that are accessible to all of us ta'ala, and they all equal Hajj. And these are all authentic narrations that I'm going to share with you. The most famous and the most common, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever prays in jama'ah, whoever prays in congregation and remembers Allah from Fajr, so prays Fajr in congregation and remembers Allah until sunrise, so they make dua or they do dhikr. They remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one of the legislated ways. And then they pray two rak'ahs after sunrise, salat al duha The Prophet sallallahu alayhi said that that person has the reward of hajj, tamma, 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 complete, complete, complete. The reward of hajj and umrah, complete, complete, complete. You could pray Fajr and you could stay until sunrise. And that is the reward of Hajj and Umrah. And that's something that the Prophet Sallallahu mentions authentically. And there are other narrations, all of them authentic. One of them, the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever walks to one of the obligatory prayers to pray in congregation, then that is the reward of Hajj. And whoever walks to pray a voluntary prayer in the masjid, then that is Umrah. And in one narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi specified Salat al-Duha. So if a person one day decides that they want to go to Salat al-Duha or they want to go pray two rak'ahs in the masjid Salat al-Duha or a voluntary prayer, then that is the reward of Umrah. And when a person walks to the mandatory Salat and the Prophet Sallallahu says, that is like a Hajj, complete, complete, complete. Well, what about the other things? The Prophet Sallallahu said in another authentic hadith, 
whoever goes out to the masjid and what they want, the only thing that they want is to learn something good or teach something good. So both the student and the teacher, when there's a halaqa and you go out to the masjid, to one of those circles of remembrance, that that person has the reward of a person who went out for hajj, tama, and he said, complete, complete, complete. Why does the Prophet keep saying tama? Because you might be thinking to yourself, come on Ya Rasulullah, really the entire hajj, the Prophet is saying the reward of hajj, complete, complete, complete. So these are things subhanAllah that surround the masjid that a person could do on a regular basis praying Salat al-Fajr and staying until Salat al-Duha, going to the obligatory prayer or going to pray a voluntary prayer, specifically perhaps Salat al-Duha when they have the opportunity to do so, or a person going to the masjid to learn or to teach. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that reward accessible to all of us, Allahumma ameen. And then there's one more narration that I want to share with you in this regard, also an authentic narration from Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a powerful narration. He says that a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he said that I want to go out and fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I desire to go out and fight for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to struggle in the path of Allah. Wa inni la aqdiru alayhi, but I don't have the means to do so. So I can't go out in Tabuk, I can't go out in her name. Ya Rasulullah, I'm unable to do so. What was the answer of the Prophet? ﷺ? He said, Hal baqiya ahadun min walidayk? Are either of your two parents still alive? Qala ummi. He said, My mother. The Prophet ﷺ said, Then show your closeness to Allah, come close to Allah with your intention. Strive and struggle by obeying her, by showing her goodness, by giving her good companionship, by serving her. And of course, we know that when it comes to jihad, this is the famous narration where the Prophet ﷺ sent the young man back and he said, Then strive in your parents, right? Strive in their favor that go back to your mother, heaven is under her feet. But here in this particular narration, which is an authentic narration, the Prophet ﷺ says, that if you do what I just told you, if you honor your mother, the Prophet said, You are a person who is amongst those who do Hajj and Mu'tamar. You are one of those who has done Umrah. Wa mujahid fi sabilillah. So subhanAllah, if one of your parents is alive, honoring your parent is like jihad and hajj and umrah all together. And this is an authentic narration from the Prophet May Allah resurrect us in the ultimate gathering in the hereafter in his companionship sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and allow us to be his neighbors in Jannatul Firdaus. Allahumma ameen.